All right, today we're going to model an entire wall in Rhino from the primary structure all the way to the outer skin. We're going to digitally model it just how you would build it on site. And so this is gonna be a really nice introduction to not only how a wall system works, but then also how to organize layers and how to model basically a house in Rhino. This is by no means a construction set or you should not go out and build this in real life. This is really just a demo project, uh, roughly based off of how you could build a shed or a small tiny house or something like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. Please let me know if you have any questions, uh, please comment and I can go over other wall systems as well if you'd like. Uh, for this wall system, we're gonna be doing a rain screen, a wood stud with a rain screen. And then after that wall system, I wanna go through a different type of uh, structure that's more of like a post and beam uh, type of uh, wall system to really show the difference between primary structure, secondary structure, and then the skin uh, as an example of how those things layer up. Uh, but for this first wall that we're going to model, we're going to focus on this rain screen. So without me talking anymore, let's get into it and start modeling this. So like I said before, we're going to model this, how it would be built, or in another ways, another way of saying it is in the sequence that it would be built. Okay, so for this, this tutorial, we're really gonna be taking advantage of these four different views within Rhino. And if you haven't already seen, I do have a basic uh, Rhino video. If you wanna first just get comfortable with the, the interface, I would recommend watching that video first. So we're gonna start here in front view, and this is just to create the slab. And to do that, I'm going to click on the rectangle and make, make a rectangle. For this, I'll just probably make it one foot and by, well, now I'm going upwards, but that's fine. We can just rotate it afterwards. Let's just do by one foot. And then I can take the scale 1D and let's just make this a 12 foot slab. So just a small slab. And then now that that's drawn, I'm going to extrude the slab so even if you are an architecture student, you most likely will start off with some type of base or foundation. Uh, maybe you don't know if it's a slab or not, maybe there's a basement, um, but for, for the most part in any sort of typical architecture project, you usually start off with some sort of base and you probably wanna make that base bigger in this circumstance since we're only doing a corner of the wall, I'm gonna make it pretty small. So, okay, so we have our main concrete slab here. And so once you would have that, there would either be, there would most likely be bolts that come up through the slab, or sometimes you would go back and, and screw those in and make bolts. But the first thing that we're going to place down is going to be our sill plate. So that's going to be, we're gonna just use uh, a two by four, although a lot of walls are thicker than this, especially in a colder climate. But for this case, since we're just kind of doing a shed type of project, uh, we're going to keep this wall pretty skinny. And for this, I am going to type in the actual dimension. So even though it's a two by four, it is actually indeed one and a half inches by three and a half inches. We'll type that in there. And I didn't do that in this, this, the right sequence. That's fine. I'll just type in rotate and rotate the rectangle down. And then like I would be laying down this, this, um, this sill plate, I can both use, uh, I'm gonna use the top view and this front view. I'll hit the rectangle and I'll hit extrude curve and bring it all the way, all the way there. And then you could imagine that there would be a series of bolts that come down through here. So let me just draw that. So there would be, let's just do a straight line. So there would be a bolt to anchor that sill plate so that if you get any uplift, or if there's any storm, your wall doesn't fly away. So it does need not, gravity alone is not going to take care of that in the case of uh, wind uplift. So you need to make sure that this is anchored down. And we're not going to draw those anchors, but just to give you an idea, uh, you know, it would, be several situated there. And if you did want to draw them, you could just 
extrude that down. And then you'll notice that since I drew the circle in top view, it just automatically went to the Z, you know, that's fine. I could just, um, let's just extrude that like 0.5 inches. That would be like the top, the nut. And that would be embedded in the sill plate. And then there would be the actual screw itself that would that would come down there or the bolt. Now for you people, you carpenters out there that are watching this, uh, you're probably saying, well, actually I would construct this thing on the ground and then tilt it up and install it. Yes, that's completely fair. Um, we could just as easily do that. Uh, but for this exercise, we are gonna just kind of build it in place. Uh, we could certainly build it in top view like you would in real life, like build it on a workbench or build it on the ground on a flat surface and then tilt this thing up. A lot of times though, there will be the sill plate. Well, I guess it depends and you have two, but um, yeah, we'll just do one for right now. And there's a couple options here for this exercise. Like we could just draft this rectangle. This is, we're now gonna draw the stud. We can draw this, uh, let's make these eight feet tall. Now. You can make that rectangle in front view. You could make it in top view. So let's see what it would look like in top view. I would probably use this one so I know which direction I'm going. So I'll go 1.5 inches and then it snaps to that. So I have to kind of click it and then click it again. I've created my rectangle and then I could extrude that curve and go up eight feet once I go into left view. So that would be the, it, you can start the rectangle in top view or you can start the rectangle in front view. It's, it's, it's completely up to you. If I start it in side view, I could come here and then I would type in the thickness of that, which would be the 1.5 inches. All right. I tend to draw things in top view and extrude them up, uh, but it's really just up to you, whatever you start to get comfortable with. All right, so we have built our first stud here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in linear. Oh, it's array linear, array linear. And I'm gonna go number of items, sure. I'll go eight, eight, and then I'm going to use this center point and then type in 16 inch. So we're going to do 16 inch on center. Once I've, I've pressed enter, uh, I, it basically snaps to that point. Notice if it's not on the same line, it's not going to be placed correctly. So you just have to make sure that you're not selecting the line below, but that you have it selected on the plane that you want to linear array this on. So now I have my eight studs. Okay. And again, yes, you are correct. I would probably build this on the ground, but nevertheless, we're going to do it in place. So, and then I'm going to draw my other, the top plate. Usually you have two, two of these. So let's do 1.5 inches and then extrude that curve. And we're not gonna go the whole way. And then, so I have this geometry selected. Let's see, I can control C, control V, and then select it and move it. Another option is if you alt click and, no, that doesn't work. If you alt click and hold, you can copy and then select it and move the point. That would be an additional option. So now we're starting, now we have, you know, the basic uh, frame. So, you know, whether you would consider this primary structure or substructure, in a way, since we're doing a simple wall, it really is your primary structure because it's gonna be load bearing. And for instance, on these corners, we would want to reinforce those and that you know probably technically would be your primary structure is these 
basically homemade or fabricated beams that you're creating within the wall. So that would be kind of considered your primary structure and then maybe the studs in between your secondary structure. Now you don't have to do wood. I think in a later example, we're gonna go through like, maybe this, this could be like a steel beam and then you have a wood wall within that. Um, that system's a little bit more complicated. So I wanted to do this first system first uh, and then we can go to that one as well. All right, and where this slab ends and begins we're not even gonna get into that. We're just gonna have it be flush for right now. But I'm now going to, so you would have your wall and at this point you would, you would probably square it up, right? You would measure from the corners and make sure that your wall is not racking too crazily. Uh, again, probably on the ground, you would do this. And then once you have that squared like actually squared because if you just screw these things in guess what it's not going to be square uh then you would put on the sheathing so before i put on the sheathing though i really want to keep what i'm calling materials on separate layers and so thinking in materials on separate layers i'm going to put the wood framing on one layer that's like the wood framing is going to be on its on a separate layer and i'll call it wood framing and i'll give it a i'll just give it a brown brown that doesn't look so brown so let's give this a brown and then to turn it on that to put it on that layer i'll i need to have the object selected and then i type in the wood framing and then i'll know okay it's brown it's on wood framing so now let's put on the sheathing. And again, you know, what view do you wanna do this in is a constant question. Sometimes it's just a matter of I'm in this view, so I'm going to model it in this view. So for instance, I'm in perspective. So I'll click this rectangle and choose the rectangle three points. And that way, when I put this, this sheathing on, and we're not gonna worry about dimensions cause it's really just a matter of, um, getting the sheathing on. We're not going to do like four by eight sheets. Uh, so that would be one way to draw a rectangle on there. Or you could come into front view and draw the rectangle in front view. You could come into top view and you could draw the thickness. So I could draw a thickness here and go, okay, I know it's going to be uh, three quarters of an inch. So, so 0.75 inches. And then extend that all the way. And then you'll notice, oh my gosh, it snapped to the bottom, to the top. This is crazy. Do not fear. I go into top view and I type in project to C plane, delete input objects. Yes. Now my, it's, that is happening. So, and then I would do extrude, extrude curve. And let's say it's too long, although sometimes you do want it to go over the edge, but uh, let's say, okay, it's too long. Um, I go scale, scale 1D. And then again, just make sure that you're selecting the right points. Like you're not going over here and selecting something over here. You need to make sure you're selecting the right points. And we'll just make this as long as our wall is for right now. Again, it's this is not... Um, you should not now go out and build this thing unless you want to. But I take no responsibility. All right, so this is the beginning of our wall and you'll notice, you know, yeah, you could put insulation now into the wall. Let's put some insulation in there. And honestly, I don't know anyone who models insulation. I mean, that just seems crazy to me. But if you're a professor or in your project, you want to be able to visualize that insulation, maybe even check for where thermal bridging is happening. Again, I would come here and type in insulation. And then I could also give all those objects hatches. Uh, so I could give it the, the, the insulation hatch. And then whenever it shows up, it will be... So we'll call this insulation. Sure. 
All right, so we have our frame, we have our, our sheathing, and what the sheathing does is it prevents the wall from doing this. You know, without that, it basically uh, would rack, and you don't want that. You want a, a stiff wall, and the reason why plywood is good at, at achieving that is because you have multiple layers that are going in, in different Great, uh, different directions. You have like, you know, five or you know, seven layers uh, crisscrossing and going different direction. Uh, but really, you're thinking about tying in from this point to this point, this point to this point, uh, and you start tying that in. So before we had plywood, even just doing in a, a lots of horizontals. I would start to tie that in, but then you're relying on the screw and that screw has the ability to have some movement in it. And so then maybe you would come back and start doing those diagonals and that would really help brace it. And you can see a lot of desks that are built like that where they have those cross braces in there. All right, so we have our sheathing and let's say there is a weather barrier on our sheathing. Whether you put it on or it's a zip system, let's just do like a quarter of an inch sheathing. And again, you know, where do you want to um, make that sheathing? You know, do you want to do in top view? Do you want to do in side view? For this time, we're going to do something slightly different. I'm actually going to do extract surface and hit copy yes and select that surface, hit enter. Now I have an additional surface to work off of. So instead of drawing the rectangle and extruding it, now I have, I've, I've extracted and copied the surface off. I'll extrude that a quarter of an inch. Now I have a weather barrier and I'll make a new layer. And we'll give this like a lavender color. Lavender is a good color. All right, so there's our lavender color. And then we're going to put on, um, now we're gonna make it into a rain screen. And so gonna put on these purlins. There's like a million different words for it, but um, yeah, we're gonna put on some, some slats here basically on top of the, the weather sheathing to essentially you're giving it uh, an air barrier. Um, so those could be vertical or horizontal. Um, and what that does is it, it gives it an air barrier for your, basically your building to breathe. But the really the advantage to the rain screen is that you're not trapping moisture in between the siding and um, your wall, basically. And so you, by separating that siding, you're essentially allowing your siding to breathe. And so, you know, moisture doesn't build up, your siding doesn't rot, so on and so forth. Depending on what your siding material is, you may or may not need a rain screen. But the, the idea of a rain screen is that essentially you've completed your wall here. And then the rain screen is really just there as a protective element from, the, from, from wind and, and, you know, heavy rain. Uh, or branches hitting it so it's not dinging up your weather barrier. So it's really more of a protective layer more than anything. It's not necessarily even a lot of the times rain screens, yeah, it gets some of that wind-driven rain maybe protects that, uh, but ultimately you need to be relying on your weather barrier and your sheathing and your insulation. All right, enough talking. Let's draw these slats. And we're just gonna do an in one inch by one inch. Sometimes they're even smaller, but we'll just do one inch by one inch. And that is huge, looks huge. I think a half inch. One inch, well, whatever, we'll just have, no. Oh yeah, this has gotta be at least a quarter. We need to make it this at least a quarter. And that even seems big. Extrude curve. So, you know, I just did a rectangle and I extruded it. 
um, extrude. And I'm constantly, you know, evaluating, well, would there be a faster, see, look what happened here. This is a really good thing to point out. So what happened was my rectangle wasn't perpendicular. So if you come into top view, let's extrude this again, extrude curve. and see how it's coming off the structure. So that's not a good sign. That means this was not drawn uh, in the planar. Basically, it wasn't planar. So we need to fix that. And I wonder, did I already get off axis with something else? Oh, I see, it didn't get off axis. There was. The sheathing just wasn't there. Whew, that was a close one. So we'll just extrude to this sheathing. And notice it does matter which one you're, let's go extrude curve, and then go up to top view, and then go just to the end of the sheathing for this. And then you could array linear again, and you know, Let's do 20, let's do a bunch of these. So select this, hit 20, enter, number. Let's just do something like that. So then you have a rain screen. We're not even gonna do the whole thing there. We're just gonna do part of it. Probably too close together. Let's just have a go down. We might as well have a go down the whole way. So array linear, let's do 30. And then just make sure that it covers the whole wall. And then any extra could come here and, and trim this up. So now we have our laths, purlins here. And then on top of that, we're going to put our siding. Now, a lot of the times they do screw the siding through these into the wall. I actually have a, a picture here for reference. So you can see here, this is a, a rain screen, a siding application, a rain screen. You can see that the screw is actually going all the way through. Uh, and then here, that's where they have, they really should be drawing. In this case, they have vertical battens or purlins. Uh, and so that way the air does go all the way through. So just to keep in mind, maybe let's make these vertical. Might as well make them vertical and stay true to this section. But then once you go to this wall here, you'll notice, yeah, they just go straight to the wall. But then again, this doesn't have as much breathability, which is nice about the rain screen. So I've seen them in both cases, like both vertical and, and see like now I wanna go back and select my purlins. And luckily I have a lot of things on layers, but I probably didn't put everything on a layer. Um, and so it's just really important to always be keeping stuff on layers. And I'm just gonna rotate this so he stays true to that section. Might as well stay true to that section. And that's a ton, that's like super dense. Oh, well. Uh, wow. And then I'm gonna make sure that these are on a new layer. New layer, we'll call this Perlin, enter properties. Okay, there we go. And then you're saying, oh, well, this is too tall. Okay, well, that's fine. I would just select that object and go into left view, go control T and trim these up. Did it do anything weird? It did something weird. And if it does something weird like that, you'll probably have more success if you just draw a line. It tends to cut that geometry. So I did Control T, uh, and then and then select those. Okay, these are going way too far down. And then you'll notice, you know, when I did do that trim, you'll notice that they're all open. Well, what you could do is basically go back and 
select all of these and hit cap and now they're closed. So that's how you solve that issue. All right, and then let's put some siding on here. I'm just gonna do some random like panel siding. You'll notice how, look, I'm, a, I'm in left view and I'm actually on the back end of my, my wall. What you can do is you can always go set view and then instead hit right and now I'm on the front of my wall. And then I could model this you know, I'm going to make huge panels, so I have to make less panels. And then we'll do this 0.75 inches and make sure it's solid when you do that. When you extrude it, make sure. And if it's not, so if you have this curve here and I type in extrude, make sure solid, yes. That's going to keep that solid. All right, so that would be uh, really, you know, you have your struct primary structure, I guess the edge, um, you know, substructure, I get, you know, would be the sheathing in this case, the, the plywood sheathing. And then you have uh, your skin uh, and just thinking about how to layer those things up. Uh, let's see how we did. Let's look at our original wall that I modeled here. I guess I didn't do the corner, uh, but just to show this time I did horizontal battens and uh, you can see in this corner, not really battens actually, because that's board and batten, uh, more like purlins. Yeah, that's the weather barrier. Oh no, sorry, that's the sheathing with the weather barrier on it. And then like a panel that would go on top of that. So a pretty simple wall. And that would be how you do to just sort of model a standard wall and just keep in mind keeping those things on layers and which layers you're you're putting those on. So now we're going to do basically prime something that's a little bit more like a timber frame type of structure. And so for that one, we're going to start in top view and kind of lay out a general structural grid, have beams and then do a substructure and then right on that substructure, do a skin. So for the project that we're doing, which is the, um, I'm doing a doghouse project. And so this would be something that, uh, yeah, you would do. So to make the, the structure, substructure, skin, just thinking in those layers. All right, so I'm gonna array linear. And in this case, let's just do eight. I'm gonna do, oh, let's just do 20 feet is ginormous, but we're just gonna do three. Let's just do three, three beams. And when you rotate this, well, we don't actually need to rotate it, that's fine. All right, and then I'm gonna, you know, do I wanna do I-beam? Let's just do a box, like a, uh -oh, just a, a box beam. So just do like, yeah. Let's just do 1.5 feet, 1.5 feet. For this, if you have center selected, I can come in here, just reference the center. Those are pretty hefty. All right, and then array linear, and then just set those out on the grid. And then alt drag copy, select those and put it there. And then I'm gonna select these crazy large beams and extrude them, go into side view and let's make this 12 feet. All right, so this is just madness. This is way too big. My beams got way too big. We should just do one foot. So unfortunately, for instance, if I select these and hit scale 1D and you'll notice that it's gonna change the spacing if I scale it like that. I could scale everything, but then it's gonna change the, the size of that. So that's why 
in other videos, I really go over blocks because then you can always change your, your beam sizes, for instance. Uh, so we're just going to do this. Let's just do like a six inch. So basically six inches. If I type in distance, I can always measure. Yeah, six inches. All right, so some crazy long beam. And let's just make this one foot. Now, I won't go over blocks or record history, but if you wanted to have something where you just want everything connected, you can use blocks, but we're not gonna go over that in this video. I have other videos that do that, and it's a, it's really just a separate subject, but just to know that it exists. All right, so we have what would be considered our primary structure. This is gonna be a really simple, <laughs> a really simple thing here, and then you know what, we're not even gonna have a third one. We're just gonna do two. So, and then I could just do this and do mirror. That'll probably be the quickest. So mirror that. And then, I just repeated a command by accident mirror what's cool is like so i don't have a line here if i hold and then hold then it will find the midpoint there but i have to make sure i use the right reference point so i have to go to the middle hold go to the middle hold mid there it is we have a frame And let's say we also have it in the other direction. So copy paste, flip this up. We're just doing like a rough frame here. Scale 1D, move, mirror, midpoint, rough frame didn't land where i wanted it to doesn't matter drag it okay we have a rough what i would consider a frame here or what we'll just consider primary structure uh, and then we're going to have secondary structures so that could look like a lot of different things uh, we're just going to do a series of laths or a series of slats so I could probably just go back to front view and this time I am gonna get it kind of bulky one inch by one inch, typing those in, selecting the curve, extrude curve, go towards the end and then array linear and then Let's, let's do bigger. I don't want to do bigger. So I'll go scale 1D and let's do three inch. Scale this and go three inch. 